An award for scholarly distinction. It sounded so good when I read the announcement sent by President Ed Muir, but after a few hours of immodest gloating, I noticed an important qualification. Recipients must also be of emeritus rank. Now, although I turned 80 last week and have been confined to a wheelchair for the past six years, I still teach. But that's just the way I want it. As Descartes almost said, I teach, therefore I am. I started teaching in Cambridge just after I graduated in 1965 and continued until I migrated to St Andrews in 1972. Both there and after I came to the United States in 1986, I've taught, as I've learned to say, across the curriculum from hectoring first year undergrads to supervising doctoral theses. And if I've learned anything from my university teaching, it's the importance of giving chance a chance. Specifically, the need to stop when I come across something I didn't know, and then to figure out why I didn't know it. Perhaps the Polish poet Wisława Szymborska put it best. Inspiration she declared in her lecture as a Nobel laureate, is, and I quote, born from a continuous niviem, I don't know. If Isaac Newton had never said to himself, I don't know, the apples in his little orchard might have dropped to the ground like hailstones, and at best he would have stooped to pick them up and gobble them with gusto. But instead, he went on to revolutionize two disciplines, math and physics. Now, I'm positive that Panashim Borska did not know that I, like Isaac Newton, was born on Christmas Day, exactly three centuries later, in a city only 30 miles from his little orchard. And, and I'm pretty sure that she also did not know that we were both born in the middle of a war that destroyed much of the world around us, that we both almost died in our first year of life, and that we both survived to attend the same university. But alas for my math and physics, in Nottingham we were taught to pick up the fallen apples and gobble them. Waste not, want not, my parents used to tell me because the scars of the Great Depression they had lived through never left them. And yet one more parallel links Sir Isaac and me. Historians, just like physicists and poets, share a passion to create something that did not previously exist. Something that will go on to have a life of its own, independent of us, whether in nature or in human nature. But it's hard work. Pablo Picasso once said that the most difficult task facing an artist was to turn a blank canvas into a picture. The same is true of writers. The hardest task is to turn a blank sheet of paper or a blank computer screen into poetry or prose. And so from Columbus, Ohio, dear colleagues, I bow low as I thank you for bestowing on me this signal honor, and I grab, I pluck an apple to sustain me as I resume my battle with a blank computer screen. Thank you all very, very much. <laughs>